Osteoporosis is a, is a debilitating bone disease characterized by low bone density and strength, and this leads to an increased risk of fracture. For example, one in three women and one in five men over 50 will suffer an osteoporosis-related fracture in their lifetime, and that amazingly corresponds to a fracture every 30 seconds in the EU. What's probably even more worrying is that if you're over 60 and you suffer one of these fractures, then one in five will actually die within six to 12 months, and half of those that survive will never be able to wash, dress, or walk unaided. So there, you can see that there's, there are severe, severe human costs to this disease, but there's also financial costs. The treatment of this is estimated about, I think, 36 billion euro annually, so it's a, it's a serious issue. Well, osteoporosis arises when there's an imbalance between bone resorption and bone formation. So in a, in a healthy patient, the amount of cell, uh, bone that's being resorbed and formed is in perfect balance. What happens in osteoporosis is that this becomes out of balance, whereby you tend to get a little bit more resorption and less formation. So treatments up until now have targeted this resorption. They, they've attempted, and they've been very effective, but unfortunately they have been associated with severe side effects. So it, it's, it's not optimum right now. So we need to develop uh, new, new approaches, um, alternative approaches, and one I'm proposing is that instead of trying to inhibit this resorption, why do we try and enhance this formation so once again we get this perfect balance? Well, as I said, I want to focus on, on bone formation, and one thing we know about bone formation is that it, it's strongly controlled by physical activity, such as exercise. And what we've known for a long period of time is that the more you, you um, physically uh, load your bones through exercise and things like that, the, the more bone you have and the healthier your bone is. And, and we've known this mainly uh, through uh, the, uh, basically astronauts going to space where they don't experience any loading whatsoever, and so because of that, they tend to lose a lot of bone. Uh, and the opposite is true when you, you come back onto Earth, I suppose, and you look at professional athletes, you look at tennis players, they have a dominant serving arm, it's loaded a lot more. And so what we see is their loading, their serving arm has more bone than their non-serving arm. So, so loading is very, very good for your bones. The problem we, is, is that although we, we do know for a long period of time that physically loading bone and the cells within your bone it results in more bone formation, we don't actually understand how that happens. Stem cells uh, reside within the bone marrow, within the centers of your bones. And these are progenitor cells, so they're er very early cells. And they, they're very powerful because they have this ability to change into different cells. And one cell they change into is called an osteoblast, and that, that is a cell that forms bone. And what we believe is happening is that when we physically activate our bones, these stem cells within your bone marrow become mechanically stimulated, they're physically stimulated. And as a result of that stimulation, they turn into a bone-forming cell. That bone-forming cell then moves or migrates to where bone is needed, and then it lays down new bone, right? So this is what we believe is happening, but we don't understand how does these stem cells, how do they sense that physical load resulting in this, right? Because if we can understand that, then we can essentially develop treatments and drugs that mimic the effect of that physical loading. In other words, we trick the cell into believing it's being physically loaded so that it does that, it, move, it, diff, it changes the bone forming cell, it moves and it forms new bone. Because if we can figure that out, then we can develop innovative alternative treatments for osteoporosis. I believe what, what the research, European Research Council will enable me to do is it will allow me to uh, test my, my, my theory, my hypothesis is that uh, this, these, these stem cells have uh, antennas, like, like the antenna you have in a car. And these antennas are called primary cilia. And this grant will enable me to investigate whether, whether that primary cilium is responsible for sensing that physical activity, resulting in that changing and, and, and migrating and forming bone. So if we can, that, this grant will allow me to test that hypothesis and figure out how it does it, so then I can go and develop drugs that will mimic the effect of physical loading through the antenna, resulting in that activity. The trick here is to figure out the mechanism so that we can, we can mimic the beneficial effects of physical loading. Uh, because this is important because a lot of people who suffer from osteoporosis tend to be elderly. They, we, when they find out they have osteoporosis, they're already very weak, their bones are weak. So we can't say, go into the gym there and lift 50 kilograms of weight. We can't tell them to go for a big long run because they might actually do more damage than good in that situation. So if we can give them a drug or a therapeutic that mimics the effect of physical loading, enhancing that formation, correcting that balance again, then I think that's a very effective way of treating osteoporosis.